happen if modern science was built off of Christians who said there's law, mathematical laws in this universe, so probably there's a law giver, that pushed them as creative minds to be scientists to figure out what the law is and who the law giver is himself. Okay. Call that a mind, call that a transcendent source, call that a higher power, but it's something outside of space and time because they knew something had to create space and time. It couldn't just pop up out of nowhere. A cell couldn't just pop up out of nowhere. That's why all the Keplers, the Galileos, even Einstein said it was such a major problem, so he eventually believed in God, no. because there had to be something outside of space and time that created space and time. I just want to um, kind of challenge you on your two uh, pieces of evidence for God. Yes. So, intelligent designer, you said the eye, human eye, so mm -hmm. there has to be a designer. Mm -hmm. But then you also said evolution is true. So, you don't As need a, a designer for making eyes, do you? If it, you can evolve an eye. You never get something from nothing. Uh, quantum physics again kind of challenges that one. No, it doesn't. Yes. It challenges it, but it, it cannot make a strong case. Why? Because it's a philosophical issue. It's not a scientific issue. Can you get something from nothing? There's, there's a book called Something from Nothing. A no. Universe from Nothing by, by Lauren Krauss. Have you read it? So No, I've not read it. Okay. No, it's impossible philosophically for you to get something where there's nothing. It, it's, it's irrational. The only thing that comes from nothing is nothing. You never get something coming from nothing. Second point is, where is the creative mechanism in evolution? The creative mechanism in evolution does not exist. There is no creative mechanism in evolution. Is there? There's two points. There's the evolution and making an eye, and then there's the universe from nothing. That, that's two kind of separate arguments, right? Yeah, one is design. And the other is something from nothing. Yes. Two different arguments, yes. Okay. So, something from nothing. Uh, firstly, we're not 100% sure the Big Bang is the beginning of the universe. We're not 100% sure of anything. So Agreed. There, there are many different other theories than yes. God. Yep. I mean, there's the multiverse. God is one of many theories for how our universe came to be. Would you agree? No. There are many different theories. Agree with you on that. But no, the idea of a multiverse has zero evidence to support it. I would. It's not impossible agree with that. to. Uh, well, all right, fine. What's the evidence that they're multiverses? Um, cosmic inflation. So, directly after the Big Bang, there was a period of inflation. Not, not the inflation we see in the universe now, there was a speeded up inflation period. And the best explanation for that at the moment is kind of like a mother universe with many patches that experience um, inflation. And so there's many universes out there. That's kind of the one. The mother and, universe. And, and, yes. And then... Has little progeny of the different universes. What on earth does that mean? It means there's a kind of bigger reality outside of the universe we see and know. What's the and, evidence that there's a bigger reality outside of this universe that we live in? Uh, there's, there are different models. Models? Yes. So because there's someone has, with their fertile imagination, come up with another model? Like, like, like the God hypothesis, yes. That's also just a model. No, it's not. It is based on my experience of reality, which is, you don't get order and design by accident. Yeah, this but, but BMW you, is you not do. a result of an explosion in a junkyard. No. Shakespeare's plays are not a result of an explosion over a computer or from monkeys tapping on the computer. You only get order and design, be it a building, a car, an article of clothing, if there's a rational mind involved. That's uh, not entirely true. Well, you, then you, give me you, some examples but, 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 of again, we, 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 There's two different arguments here. There's a, the universe one and then there's um, design or, or uh, uh, kind of complex, you know, mechanisms out there, like, like the eye or you can get humans from 
evolution, starting with a basic replicator. Oh, I said that. I agreed with that. But why do you then need a designer? Because when you, can get you it do wrong? not have order and design without an intelligent mind involved. But and we, secondly, you don't get something coming do. from nothing. It's impossible. Again, that's two different arguments. Let's say, let's say. I'm aware it's two we, different we, we, arguments. Which one do you want to argue? Let's say, we, let's, let's, let's do the evolution one, right? Okay. So, imagine there's a very basic molecule, right? And it can replicate itself in the primordial soup, as um, it's been called. Over four billion years, directed by natural selection, not a designer, not a god, you can evolve complex life, starting from a very simple basic building block. Do you agree with that or not? I think it's rather clear that it's impossible to get a genetic code out of primordial soup by accident. The genetic code where proteins are allowed to be produced is far too complex a genetic code for me to say, okay, it's all just an accident. It just happens by chance. The amount of information in the DNA of a single cell is far more than the amount of information in three sets of the 30 volume Encyclopedia Britannica. When you study the amount of information in the DNA of a cell, it is mind boggling. Yes, and it's real simple. It's a billion years. If you, so what if it's a few billion years? I don't care if it's a trillion years. You don't get that kind of order and design by chance. There's got to be an intelligent mind of some type. Again, it's not complete chance. The mutations are chance, but it's guided by natural selection. No. You do not have one plus one equal two guiding anything. One plus one equals two is a very accurate description, mathematically, in arithmetic, of if you have one and another one, it equals two. But guess what? One plus one equals two does not put any money in my bank account. I have to put the money, an intelligent being, into my bank account. Now, is one plus one equal two true? Yes, it is. But it, is, it doesn't do anything creative. It simply describes reality, which is, if you have one plus one, then you got two. That's what science is. That's what mathematics is. It's tremendously sophisticated. It's absolutely magnificent. I love it. But it is intellectually dishonest to say, therefore, because I know that one plus one equals two, therefore I'm going to have two dollars in my bank account. No. It's not just going to happen. I honestly do not understand your argument there. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying I, I, this one plus one equals two abstract um, numbers. That's not where I'm going with this. I'm just saying that the accumulation of very simple processes can lead to something complex. How in the world, though, do you believe in that naturalistic process if modern science, just recently, in the last 10 years, there is consensus on a cell cannot evolve? There's trucks within a cell that work together, but there's no evolutionary process with a cell. Any um, non-Christian apologetic scientist that you can point me to? Oh. I don't know many I mean, si so, scientific apologists who so are, are not-So, a, a single cell, um, <laughs> there's this evidence for um, when um, the first single cell engulfed another cell, and that was the start of multicellular life, right? They've reproduced that process in the lab. No, no, so I, it, no. no what, that is, so once you have that, ha then you can- But th th there's no scientific evidence to that. There is no evidence behind that. You just asked me where I got mine. Where do you get the evidence that Lawrence Krauss does not, I've talked to Lawrence Krauss before. He does not believe that. He does not say that a cell can just pop up out of nowhere and then just evolve and self-replicate. I also never say that cell pops out of nowhere. Okay, so where does it come from then? Okay, so firstly, that, that's, that's, okay. I yeah. do not know, <laughs> okay, right? Good. Good. Bravo. Good. All right, bravo, very good. It's fine not to know. But science is working on that problem. That, that's, that's a big, active scientific field to, to find the first 
Golding and that's a great fly. out for you. No, it's no, a science no, no, of the no, no, gap. No, no, science no. eventually will just figure it out. That's how science works. No, no, no. Science is dedicated to discovery, but that is such a nice out for you to say, oh, there's no God, but science will just figure it out the, one day. Big... No, God absolutely is a creative, you want to talk about process, just call it a mind out there. If modern science was built off of Christians who said there's law, mathematical laws in this universe, so probably there's a law giver, that pushed them as creative minds to be scientists to figure out what the law is and who the law giver is himself. Okay. Call that a mind, call that a transcendent source, call that a higher power, but it's something outside of space and time because they knew something had to create space and time. It couldn't just pop up out of nowhere. A cell couldn't just pop up out of nowhere. That's why all the Keplers, the Galileos, even Einstein said it was such a major problem, so he eventually believed in God, because there had to be something outside of space and time that created space and time. I'm going to preface what I'm going to say with, I know that's not how it happened, but the Yuri Miller experiments in the 1950s where they put a couple of um, um, yep. element components in a flask, yep. added energy, they show that you can get the beginnings of amino acids. And that was That's totally disproved. Just totally disproved they, by they, NASA. NASA totally disproved they, it. They, they had it wrong what elements That's were That's right. Available. Exactly. So they're but, wrong. But it kind of shows you that there are ways that you can do it. People are still working on this. Yeah, outside of reality, there are ways. No. Poof, it can happen. The, the, if you go Why do you believe poof, it can now, happen? Well, it's go, outside of reality. Come if on, If you go man. to conferences on this, there are... People working on models, working on ideas, how you could either and um, vents under the sea, these hot thermal vents, how you can create life there, how you can do it. I mean, there, there are many different theories out there. People are working on it. But, but see, this is all you're just saying. Just have faith that we will exactly. find Exactly. You just right? have faith. Science. <laughs> no disrespect by this. But you just stepped up and all you're saying is, well, no God. We just came from nothing, and science will figure it out. And there's models out there, but you're not giving the models. You're just saying there's models, and somehow science will figure it out. Well, where is the best evidence coming from? You need more than just saying there's models, and science is going to figure it out. I need more than that. You see that? A couple of years ago, we didn't even know they were other galaxies. Mm -hmm. Would we, should we just have assumed, let's not do science. Science is never going to find... Let's just believe that no, we're the only... No, keep studying. We should keep on doing Good. science, asking questions yes. and finding yep. the answers, yep. right? If you can buy fully into that, so no God, there's no objective purpose, you came from nothing, there's no meaning in your life, you're going nowhere, you're just going to the grave, and that's all. So you need to buy into, I'm glad you brought up Lawrence Krauss and your boys, Dawkins and Hitchens and all of them. They clearly stated, you have no purpose... You're an accident. You have no meaning. You make up how you want to treat other people. Ultimately, it's all about just propagating the gene pool, survival the fittest. So if you want to sleep with somebody else's wife, if that's going to get you ahead, you go ahead and do that and just don't let them figure it out. But in, term, in terms of it being consistent with your theory, in terms of survival the fittest, strong eat the weak, and I want to propagate my own genes, Genghis Khan, just go ahead and sleep with your friend's wife. No, okay, so there's still objectively. Um, okay, let, let me say it like this. Um, I don't think there's objective morality, but we do create morality because there's a better strategy for survival, and a good strategy for survival in between humans, where we live as um, social animals, is to work together. So me not sleeping with my friend's wife is because we have social rules for the flourishing of humanity. It's better to work together yeah. than against each other. So the only reason why you're not sleeping with your friend's wife is just because you kind of want to work together from an evolutionary perspective. That's what's holding you back? Well, um, <laughs> depends what is my friend's wife. Look, depends my friend. <laughs> what, what, what friend are we talking about? <laughs> Can I turn this against you again, quickly? Um, what about slavery? Is slavery wrong? Absolutely, yes. Does the Bible say it's wrong? Absolutely, yes. Please tell me where. It starts in Genesis chapter 1. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. 
It goes on to Exodus chapter 21, verse 16, where we read, If you kidnap someone and are caught either still possessing them or having sold them, you are to be put to death. Death penalty. Okay. Rules for treating your slave in the Bible. At no point does That's God right. say slavery is wrong. Oh, God says it's totally wrong. Uh, no. Just read the letter of Philemon. Paul writes to a slave owner, Philemon, I have met your runaway slave Onesimus in prison. I've led him to Christ. I want him to come back to you. Please accept Onesimus back no longer as a slave, but as a brother in Christ. One Clearly. slave. Pardon? One slave was free. Galatians 3.28. There's neither slave nor free for all in, are one in Christ Jesus. Why do you think William Wilberforce? Why do you think Frederick Douglass? Why do you think all of these different actors who are Christians led the abolishment of slavery? Why do you think they did that? Especially Frederick Douglass. He was a slave himself. He was beat endlessly. Was and yet he took the Bible and he said, we're going to go after this and attack slavery because of what Jesus Christ and no, Paul because stood for. we are more moral than the Bible. Ooh, We're more moral you know, than the Bible. Yes. Oh, oh, so yeah, you do yeah, have an objective good. standard. <laughs> no. Yes, you do. You've just said we are more moral than the Bible. So you've made quite a judgment statement. Fine, I have no problem. You can make whatever statement you want to. But let's be real honest. You're not a relativist. You have just said we are more moral than the Bible, which means you have a standard, an objective standard of morality that the Bible falls far short of, but that you, with your moral superiority, do a better job meeting. It's a subjective moral um, evaluation idea. You cannot live out moral relativism. It is impossible. Because you as a moral relativist, which you already acknowledge, are trying to pin us with this issue of, oh, does the Bible say that maybe slavery is right? You're appealing to a moral argument. You're not appealing to a moral relativism. You're appealing to an objective moral standard and saying, I can't believe this horrible book, the Bible, actually promotes slavery. Okay, good argument. Because slavery is not a good um, uh, method for flourishing of mm. Which is your relative definition of morality. Yes, it is. Exactly. Well, just don't get too committed to your position, because remember, it is relative. But exactly. Morality changes all, all the time. Okay. 2,000 years ago, it was fine to have a slave. Even 200 years ago, people thought it was fine to have a slave. We... Pro progress, right? Now it's not cool to no, have a No, we don't progress. Anymore. Yes, we did. No, we don't. There's, we, What's we, the bloodiest century in the history of humankind? The 20th century. No, How about 42 maybe, million maybe by Stalin? How about 37 million by Mao Zedong? How about 21 million by Adolf Hitler? How about 2 million by Pol Pot? The 20th century was the bloodiest the maj most human beings massacred of any well, century well, if, throughout human if history. We don't count God massacring a lot of people. Oh, really? Like, when did that occur? Who did that? Go who did God massacre? There, there's a story about a flood where he just decided, man, I don't like these people anymore. Let's kill them all. No, that's not a, true at all. Oh, sorry. He that's... chose to dis to judge people who had consistently done evil, and he judged them. And there's coming a day of judgment when he will judge all of us, and he does that because he's just because he loves, because we hurt each other and rip each other off, God doesn't say, let's have coffee at Starbucks. It really doesn't matter if you murdered somebody or hated them or raped them. It's okay, I'm just loving. And what goes around comes around, so let's just la la la. No, he loves you, which means if he loves this man and this man hurts this man, he's gonna judge him for hurting him. Why? Because he loves him, that's why. God is not a rogue, he's not a Scrooge. He's a loving being who is just. And I can promise you, if you think date rape is cool, you're going to be in trouble with God. And I don't care how much you justify it with moral relativism and, well, just, you know, we just make it up as we go along. No, God says, you treat people as valuable human beings because they're not just hunks of primordial slime evolved to a higher order. They're human beings created in the image of God. And so why aren't you pro-eugenics, or are you? All human beings are created in the image of God. All human beings, whether you were born, handicapped, whatever it might be. Those who are a suck on society, based off of your evolutionary morality, why wouldn't you say eugenics is a good thing? Why wouldn't you go with the Scandinavian countries right now, some of them, that are atheistic, who are saying, hey, we're almost killing off completely Down syndrome babies, because we're aiming at them to abort them like that. All of that makes sense from your evolutionary perspective, does it not? 
so <laughs> again, lot to unpack here. Um, not really. Either everyone's created in the image of God and they all have equal worth, my, my, or they're not from the evolutionary perspective. I can choose to also treat everyone equally without believing in a God. I, 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 um, I grant you a right to, li to life. I grant you rights because that's the same I want for myself. And you can change that whenever you'd like. Hitler, for example, he bought into Nietzsche's slave morality and understood that ain't gonna get me anywhere. So everyone who has value is Aryan now. And he turned Jesus into a blonde haired, blue eyed man. So you could do that yourself too. Yes, if you're gonna instate morality. I can, but I don't want to. Why don't you? Why don't, why don't you want? It doesn't matter if you want to or not. You're I, still I, totally I mercurial. I go and rape everyone I want, and I do every day. I and don't this want is, to rape anyone. I and this is why I think anyone. you're a little goldfish right now, swimming in a water, and you don't know what that water really is. <laughs> what? It's the Judeo-Christian values that you have now attached yourself to. Sure you have. It, it you're is. a very nice guy. And I appreciate the way you dialogue with us. I really do. But that's all based on a view of personhood. It's to work together and not walk around killing and raping people. Yeah, but if raping people helps the human race propagate, according to your worldview, there's nothing wrong with rape. If we produce more babies by raping, that's good, according to your worldview. So just be consistent. I, I never said I believe in just having as many children as I want. Or... I know you didn't say that. So th that that's not... I find meaning in life somewhere else than raping people. <laughs> Good. I, there's, there's, there's meaning and I create my own meaning. Yes. And it's not by creating offspring. Okay. Okay, so I find meaning in, well, science and, 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 and Good. conscious experiences. Yeah. The meaning of your life is today. If you create the meaning of your life tomorrow exactly opposite, yeah, yeah. One is not right, the I've, other's not wrong. It's all relative. I've changed my meaning many times. Good. Okay, now, can you really live that out? If I say the meaning of my life is to love and respect this guy, and tomorrow I say the meaning of my life is to steal from him and to eventually murder him, are those both equally valid? <laughs> to who? In reality. You see, the well, point is, if in reality it's all relative, then it doesn't matter whether I feed him a meal tonight, or whether I murder him. It's my choice. Choice, yeah, choice, you, my we're choice. Gonna, we're gonna put you in jail if you murder him. Oh, come on. Only stupid people get caught by the police. <laughs> if you're smart enough, you ain't gonna get caught by the police. All right, you do it right, you're gonna get away with it, right? But you see, what? It, see, that's the despair. See, that's why Albert Camus, the great atheistic French existentialist philosopher said, the only question we atheists got to answer is, why not commit suicide? I love older Camus. Yeah. Great guy. All right, so do I. And all I'm trying to press you to be is, be as consistent intellectually as Camus was. And Camus points out, Stupid. yesterday, l'étranger, right? Stupid. A young teenage boy says, yesterday, mother died. Or was it today? Who gives a rip when mother died? Life is meaningless. And if mom died yesterday or today, it really doesn't matter because it's all meaningless. Life is absurd. But in the, in, in the myth of Sisyphus, yes. where he asked that question, right. he kind of found not to commit suicide, right? He said, okay, but we can still make meaning. You can find meaning in the absurd. But he said, meaning, you seeking after meaning, is just a dirty trick that nature is playing on you. It, it is. It, okay, so he also said, justice, seeking after justice and human rights and equality for all. He also said consciousness. That's all nature just playing a dirty trick on you. 100%. Okay, good. You truly believe that. Consciousness. That, that there's is, no is, real justice, that there's no real human rights. Yes. That there's no true eternity out there, that there's no true consciousness, your ability to reason about your reasoning, your ability to see a rose, see the rose, and think about the rose. That's all just nature playing a dirty trick on you. So when you say, I'm seeking after meaning in this life, my dad put it perfectly in terms of that can change tomorrow, but also don't forget that that's just nature playing a dirty trick on you. Don't, don't actually get so attached to it and say like, this is actually my meaning. And when you say something like, well, my meaning is not to propagate the gene pool, well then, then stop it. Stop it with the whole evolutionary morality thing, because evolutionary 
perspective is all about propagating your genes. So you should be focusing on just having more kids. The strange thing is, do you know atheists in this country by far and away have the least amount of kids? Huh, it's a little contradictory. Christians and religious people have around 3.1 kids. Atheists have about 0.9 children. Now that is so strange to me because if the majority are just buy in to evolutionary psychology in the process, they should be having more kids than religious people. <laughs> religious people, Christians specifically, you get back in Genesis, be fruitful and multiply. That's, the, that's so much of the purpose of having a marital covenant and family. Well, why is Elon Musk? Why are so many people now saying we need to grow our population? I think there's a specific reason for it. And yet the contradiction of atheism when it comes to evolution is, no, no, I'm going to live for myself. There's no eternity out there. It's a depressing existence. So why would I have children? So I think you should switch your understanding of things if you're going to be honest in your evolution. <laughs> evolution, it's, it's how we got here. I'm not it's trying a random, to... It's a totally random process yeah, then. My, my... So then you're thinking about that, that thinking you just said, that is a random type of thinking that I cannot yes, trust. That's fine, but my, my point is, I didn't believe in um, 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 evolution in the sense that I should do what evolution tells me to do. You are wired, you're hardwired by evolution. Yes, you should. Well, um, you don't have free will in it. You are programmed by a system and that system is evolution. They, they, there's a lot more to this than, than what you're saying. So you don't have enough genes to completely hardwire the brain. So in a way, you, you, your brain gets wired through experience and life. So no, my, my genes do not necessarily say exactly what I have to choose. There's a lot of factors playing into it. So that. from a materialistic perspective, how do you get free will? Um, so <laughs> do, do you want to go down a no, hole? You, you can keep going with whatever you're doing. Free will here. There are three positions in free will. No, no, just tell us what you believe. What position. do you believe? We don't want to, yeah. I'm a compatibilist. I'm sorry? A compatibilist. Which means? Means I think, um, so the universe is deterministic. Yeah. I believe that, but I think that's compatible with free will. How? That, that's what compatibilist is. Um, if everything's determined, how do you have free will? <laughs> Depends on your definition of free will. All right, what's your definition? Just shoot straight with, what do you believe? I believe my brain makes choices right and I'm in a way a slave to what my brain decides to uh -huh. do my brain was wired by mm -hmm. since the Big Bang up till now everything that happened had an influence on how my brain developed up to now however it's so complex due to chaos theory there are so many <coughs> neurons and connections that we will never be able to predict what I'm going to do just by scanning my brain. So free will is a term we invented. It's not inherent in, in, in the universe. It's a term we, in, all terms we invented, right? It's, it's not innate in, in the universe. We decided I'm going to call this thing free will. I don't know what his next move is going to be. So I attribute free will to him just because I am not able to predict what he's going to do next. It's, it's a useful term we use to navigate life. Okay. My experience of life is I can denigrate him or I can respect him. If I denigrate him and you ask me, why did you denigrate this man? And I say, because I had to. Will you believe me? No. Why not? I'm a chemical machine. I was programmed by evolution from your worldview by my chemical components, and so my chemicals forced me to denigrate him. So why don't you hold me responsible for that? I will hold you responsible for that. And if I turn to you and say my chemicals made me do it? I will still hold you responsible for that, because that means your chemicals will make you do it again, and that means you should be taken out of my society. Uh -huh. Where we have a social understanding of what's the best way to live for everyone to flourish. Right. And so if you're a Jew living in Nazi Germany or if you're a black living in apartheid South Africa. I'm from South Africa, by the way. Okay, good. Welcome to this country. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's too bad if you're a black person living in apartheid South Africa, isn't it? But that's all just determined. It's all relative. So why on earth would you try and change it? 
because we're aspiring for better. Who defines better? We do. Mm -hmm. So why is it not better for you to enslave black people in order to propagate your tribe? Why, 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 would, you, why would that be better, healthier for you? Um, it's, it's, it's just, for me, it's better if we all work together. I right. mean, if, if I enslave someone, that means they have the right to enslave me. And I don't want someone to enslave me, so I'm not going to enslave anyone else. So it's ultimately your morality is based off of selfishness, because I don't want you to do it to me. Probably, yes. I would like everyone to enjoy their lives, because I want to enjoy my life. Mm -hmm. Great. And part of enjoying my life means I'm going to denigrate him, and him, and him. <laughs> Part of enjoying my life means I'm going to steal his money, his money, his money, because it'll help me get ahead in life. For a very short while, then we're all going to catch on, and you're not going to have that great life anymore. Oh. The best strategy is to work together. That's my point. Mm -hmm. Until you can get away with it, because you can be a selfish knife, which I'm sure you've heard from and Nietzsche. There are many people. And so you have a nice social group, but you break your moral contract whenever you can get away with it, from your perspective. Because um, it helps you. So you're going to buy in to your social group, so everybody work together. But Nietzsche put it beautifully in terms of you can step out, and if it betters you and helps you, you're going to do that. Because we're selfish creatures, instead of living for the tribe. So you're good with that, right? You agree with Nietzsche? I love Nietzsche. What a great guy. Um, so, <laughs> He's brilliant. Uh, yeah, he brilliant. was brilliant. So be a free rider whenever you can. Um, I mean, it becomes difficult in the sense that, yes, um, and, uh, yeah. Uh. All right, what do you think about Jesus Christ? Have you read the Gospels? What do you think about him? If something I read um, contradicts the laws of nature, I'm going to question it. So good, if, good. And if something I believe in, like Jesus Christ, contradicts my experience of life, my faith in Christ is bankrupt. And that's what I was trying to do to you, David, showing you that although you have a belief system, it is totally bankrupt because it does not give you the basis for what you hold to so tightly, which is, let's flourish, let's be kind, let's be nice to each other. No, sir. Your worldview says, there is no such thing as kindness, there's no such thing as niceness, it's all relative. You see, David, your worldview is contradicted by your experience of reality. And I applaud you for your kindness, but realize what you believe about life contradicts your kindness. I'd like to invite you to Grace Community Church, located at 365 Lukeswood Road in New Canaan, Connecticut. Our services are at 9.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. on Sundays. Hope you can join us.